All right, going to do a real quick video answering a letter I received from a younger brother in the Lord. He says, uh, Brother Brian, I enjoy watching your videos on your YouTube channel. May the Lord do good to your ministry. Thank you. I have many questions from your videos. What is that book on the Waldenses? Uh, right here. Oop. Almost dropped it. History of the Waldenses by... Is the name on the front there? No. J.A. Wiley. See it there? Um, this is an older edition of it. <clears throat> the The newer one is, uh, uh, it says a new cover and things on it. Um, it's available on Amazon.com. You can look it up. It's just History of the Waldenses by J.A. Wiley is what you'd want to look up. Um, I don't know if it's the same publisher. There's the uh, publish your name there and the ISBN if you want to copy that okay so very good book I recommend that one uh, very good very good one to read very interesting group of people okay next question what are good books on exposing Catholicism okay um, well I would say for light easy reading this one here by David Daniels, Babylon Religion by David Daniels, very very good book, showing a you know it's a easy to understand just kind of a comic book, a lot of illustrations in there and things and you, you know Jack Chick's sense of humor combined with David Daniels' sense of humor. When you're a Bible believing Christian, you'll have some somewhat of a sarcastic sense of humor. Uh, a lot of lost people get offended and things like that, but. Sorry about that. Uh, not really, actually, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Um, another one. This is more of a more detailed study. The Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop. Uh, again, this is an older edition of it. Um, I think the newer one. Yeah, here's the newer one. Uh, right there. This hardback one. This is my wife's copy of it. Um, but that's that's another one I would recommend, and you know you'll get this thing that it's so funny. The Catholics they'll come out and they'll say that book's been debunked. That book's been debunked. It's just like read the book, and then compare what he's saying to what you see with the Vatican, the whole Catholic system. The book was written back in the 1800s, and it's just like it's not been debunked. They're doing the things that he says in there. Um, another one by David Daniels. Did the Catholic Church give us the Bible? Uh, this is mostly talking about the Bible version issue, the King James versus the New versions, um, and these are these are pretty cheap books. They're not they're not real expensive. Uh, we used to actually hand these things out, um, but this one's mostly about the Bible version issue. But it'll educate you a lot of about a lot of the ways that the Catholics do things. Uh, this is a good one um, by Ed Edmund Paris, the Secret History of the Jesuits. Again, available through Chick Publications. Uh, I have. I'm not going to get them down right now, but the uh, up there I have the Alberto comics. Very good. Um, this one, Fox's Book of Martyrs, by John Fox, written a long time ago. And this will tell you about the brutality of the Roman Catholic Church, what they did, torturing people and things. Um, Terrible stuff. 50 Years in the Church of Rome by Charles Chiniqui. Uh, he was a Roman Catholic priest in the 1800s. He was actually, de his defense attorney was Abraham Lincoln, so before Lincoln became president. Very interesting. Uh, I was trying to think of other ones. Another one by Chiniqui, another good one I'd recommend is The Priest, The Woman in the Confessional. Again, very good book. Uh, there's there's a lot of them I have in my collection, um, but those are the those are the best ones I would say. And um, another thing that I've used to study Catholicism is actually uh, Catholicism itself. Uh, when you get grounded, firmly grounded in the King James Bible, and you know proper Bible doctrine, you can look at their own writings and you can see how corrupt they are. Okay, so comparing their teachings with Scripture, and you'll see very quickly how crooked and corrupt the Catholic Church is. 
a good one too. This is one that they'll try to deny. A lot of Catholics, they'll say, well, we don't believe that stuff. And they do. Uh, the New St. Joseph Baltimore Catechism. And it's got the imprimatur and all the nihil obstat and all the other stuff. But you compare this thing with Scripture, and it's just incredible how you know bad the teachings of Roman Catholicism is. So uh, that would be my suggestion. Um, learn the truth about Catholicism, and then you can actually read their own writings, read their own stuff. And a um, good way to study Catholicism. Uh, what's a good book on learning dispensationalism? Well, uh, the classic book is right here. This is what a lot of people will tell you right here. Clarence Larkin's book, The Greatest Book on Dispensational Truth in the World. But uh, this book has some issues. Um, he quotes the revised version of 1881, Westcott and Hort's Bible. Um, there's some other parts that I, you know, I don't agree with him on it. Uh, he's into the gap theory, which I'm not into the gap theory. Again, I've been back and forth with different brethren on that thing. I think it's kind of a ridiculous thing. Um, but, you know, whatever. This one here, well, Doug Stauffer's book, One Book Rightly Divided, it's not in print anymore, so I can't really recommend that one. Uh, I think he's trying to redo it or something like that. So that one's kind of you know, not going to say much more on that one. Uh, this one here, just a good basic one, How to Teach Dispensational Truth by Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. It's a good one. There's a, there's a bunch of them out there. I think there's a David Walker that has one. haven't read that one, so I can't endorse it fully and say, oh, yeah, it's good. Uh, okay, there we go. So... But, you know, just, I mean, basically read the Bible you're, you know, for yourself and you'll see that there's dispensational changes. Um, it says here, I enjoyed your video on your bookshelf tour. I just wished, or I just wanted to uh, know some more detail on these books. It'll take me a long time to go through all these. Uh, can you do a sermon on exposing the Hebrew roots, Hebrew root book called the Peshitta, Colossians 2.14? The, the whole Hebrew Roots movement, I mean, so many people have come out against it and said things against it and whatever else, and it's just like it's there, but it's, I'm, there are certain fights I don't get into simply because other people have covered that, and I don't want to be like the end all, you know, Brother Brian has spoken on every issue out there. Uh, there's, I, I can't do that. I'm not an expert in all areas. I, Hebrew Roots, the whole thing is you just use the book of Galatians. Um, they're trying to get you back under the law. We're not under the law anymore. Um, the law is there to convict of sin, to point you to the Savior. It's a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. So somebody comes along and they say, well, we're all supposed to be Jews and we're supposed to act like Jews and, you know, re rewrite the King James Bible um, because, you know, we should, it should say Yeshua and not Jesus. And not, you know, there's a lot of these things that people come out with, you know, and, and they'll they'll say, the true Jews are the black people or the true Jews are the white people or something like that. It's not the Shemites that are over in Israel. And, you know, and they'll, they'll try to draw in you into these deep, deep debates and all this twisting of Scripture. And it's just very simple to answer that. You just simply say, okay, well, God promised a piece of land, physical land, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their descendants. So it's over there in Israel. We know where it is. It's not like the Garden of Eden where, where is it today? Well, we don't really know. You know, we know where Israel is. And the group of people that are there, if those are false Jews and you're part of the true Jews, then go take their land from them. Okay? God's on your side. Hey, if you're a true Jew, you're supposed to have the land. So God would be certainly backing you. So go on over, take the land. It's rightfully yours. That answers the argument rather quickly there. So the Hebrew Roots Movement, again, they're just trying to get you back on the law. They're trying to change the authority of the King James Bible, question the wording of it and stuff. So just scrap them. Okay, continuing here with the letter, it says, Oh, and I never understood what a bishop or a deacon is, as in 1 Timothy chapter 3. I don't understand their role in the house church. I'm still a growing believer. Well, that's fine. Um, the, the purpose of uh, bishops and deacons, bishop, you know, people, again, will try to make a big thing out of that and whatever else. I just see an elder and a bishop as being the same thing. 
Uh, I don't believe that there's like, you know, you have a plurality of elders, which I do believe in, but then there's a bishop that presides over them and the bishops answer to the other. Eh, I, I stay away from that. Um, when you get a, a house church fellowship, there should be a man in authority. Um, and then, you know, other men as, I mean, if it's a small fellowship, there should be men, you know, man in authority. And then as he teaches other men, they're brought up to the position of elders when they've, you know, proved themselves to be um, faithful and things in the word. And then they can go out and they can start other small fellowships and things like that. Um, and then you have other people that would be other men that are in deacon type positions where, you know, you, you have them doing more of the, um, maybe not so much the teaching of the word. They're supposed to be instructed in that, but they do kind of the organization of things and other tasks and whatnot. And, you know, and I think that there can be house churches that have a good amount of people in them, uh, fellowships and things like that, um, and that are out doing work and things. But again, we're not really dealing with that right now because we are literally at the end of the church age and, you know, the, the professing church out there is in terrible apostasy. And so I don't really see a huge, you know, number of giant groups of house churches that are going to spring up or something. And so that's how I'd answer that. Um, he goes on to say, I currently attend a secular community college and live in a Catholic family. It's hard to decide what I will do next for plans in my future. Maybe you would have recommendations. I want to live a simple life, not like the rest of the world. Sincerely, and then he gives his name. Um, that's a neat little drawing down here at the bottom too. So thank you for the letter, brother. I appreciate that. Uh, what would by, be my recommendations? Well, I would have to ask, what are you going to a community college for? Um, that's just basically going to get you into debt, and then you're going to have a debt hanging over your head. Um, unless you really have a job situation lined up, I'd stay away from any kind of college um, training and things like that because you're, you're, you're going to be going into the world with a debt. That's a problem. Um, if I was a young man again, knowing what I know now, I would simply look at the, the future and say, okay, um, I'm going to go and I'm going to try to get an apartment someplace or whatever else, and I'm just going to work at a hardware store or work at some wherever decent place to work, and I'm going to just going to do the work of the Lord and, and see what the Lord does with my life, and if He leads me into ministry of some kind or whatever, uh, great. Um, I wouldn't actively pursue uh, getting married. Uh, again, I know, you know it's better to marry than to burn and all that. I understand. But uh, you can get yourself messed up if you marry the wrong woman as a saved man. So uh, I would just really try to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And then He'll add all the other things to your life. Uh, that would be my recommendation. I'd study as much as possible. If I was a you know young man again, uh, I, I started my studies when I was 25, so you know it's fairly young. Um, but uh, so that's how it answered the the letter. I uh, hope that answers your questions, and thank you for writing.